it's time for your mix of movers and shakers, of doers and makers. It's time for Funko Fun Chat. Today's guests, you know them as the voice of Frieza from Dragon Ball, Cherry Blossom from Skate the Infinity, and many more. It's Damon Mills. He's the co-creator of Deadpool, Cable, and X-Force. Get to know Rob Liefeld. You won't believe the classic songs and TV show themes this composer has written. Meet Charles Fox. And now, let's mix it up with Funko Fun Chat. I'm Damon Mills. I'm a voice actor and ADR director. My name is Rob Liefeld. I have been writing, drawing, producing comic books for 37 years. Hi, I'm Charles Fox, and I'm a composer. I voice Frieza, who is the villainous character. I would think this pin here would be much more elegant. All the little things that would make it much more marvelous. And it can't even stand on its own. I have made Deadpool and Cable and Domino and X-Force and a million characters that I have seen on Funko shelves that are now on my shelves. I'm breaking the fourth wall. I'm breaking the fourth wall. I've been very fortunate because I spent the last 60 years or so doing what's in my heart, writing music. Any chance we'll take it. Read us any rule, we'll break it. We're gonna make our dreams come true. Do it our way. Love. How about something like that? Exciting and new. Now, all the love boats, princess line boats, Play my theme on their foghorn. It's the ugliest thing you'll ever hear. So I've always been a fan of anime and video games since I was a kid. When I was a teenager, I was being opened up to the world of voice acting and understanding what it is. And so, funnily enough, Dragon Ball is kind of what got me interested in voice acting because I was understanding, oh, these characters have people that do the voice for a profession, and that's really cool. Looking into how to do that, I kind of did little indie projects on my own, recorded on my own. Just as practice, I remember my mom used to be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed and introverted and you, you shouldn't know any of, any of this. I eventually started getting connected with people in the industry and getting either advice from them or moving around a lot. I've been doing this since I was 16. I'm almost 30. Boy, oh boy, you, you got me. Okay, so, so, so the, y yeah, no one's gonna understand this reference. They've been trying to remake Logan's Run, which is a movie from the 70s, for, for a million years. It has never been more relative than, I mean, the, the entire premise of Logan's Run is that, yeah, like, there are no old people. And I look and I'm passing a billboard on, on the way here and they're all airbrushed and they all are trying to look 20 years young. The entire culture is based on looking younger. Logan's Run is about like you die at 21 because no one can go any further. So Logan's Run is my old man answer. It just aged me. I went to the full on 1970s, my youth and ruined it. If you want to know the truth, in all the work I've done, I've composed it, I've arranged it, and I've conducted it, and I've produced it. Sunday, Monday, Day, Friday, happy days. We wrote the song Happy Days. For the first year, they, they used uh, Rock Around the Clock. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, when we seven, wrote our song, rock, Norman said, um, why don't we do something similar like, instead of one o'clock, two, we'll do Sunday, Monday, Happy Days. Gary Marshall used to come out and entertain the audience, and he was always funny. And they said, you know, we're doing that, we might as well use the song we have, Happy Days. The show exploded as number one show. Our record went to number one around the world. And it all exploded after that. Lately, recently, with an anime I did called Skate the Infinity, there's a lot of people who watch that show who are LGBTQ. And the people that come to me telling me how the show has really helped and resonated with them on that level. And they've been able to come out. And it's so touching to me that something like that would help somebody through that time because it's very hard. I mean, I'm, I'm a gay man and I get how hard that can be. Even just like 10 years ago, it was a lot less accepted. And it makes me so happy to hear my work in any way has impacted them in a positive way.
Like the pine trees lining the winding road I got a name I got a name Like the singing bird in the croaking toad I've got a name I got a name. Got that a came name. from a movie called Last American Hero. And it was a story about a racing driver. Lamont Johnson was the director of that film. And I, I said to Lamont, you know, it'd be nice to have a song for this picture. And he said, you know, I, I don't like a picture that has a song that tells you what the story the film is about. It's let the story happen by itself. I said, well, that's not what I would do at all. You know, I said, I would write a song about the character. So we get to understand who this character is, where he comes from. Like the pine trees lining the winding road, I got a name. Look, young little Rob Liefeld knew that he had to step out, break out. That New Mutants book was a fixer-upper, and they told me it's a fixer-upper. You know, 23 years old, out of desperation, people go, what what um, motivated you? I'm like, uh, how about not being able to pay rent? Uh, the book's gonna get canceled. I need a job next month. So I had to change the cast, change the characters, change the dynamics of the book. And so by introducing Cable and Domino and Deadpool, all these characters, and then pivoting and convincing Marvel, can we change the name? Because when I was a kid, it was like, New Mutants doesn't roll off your tongue. Say it five times fast, you'll know what I'm saying. X-Force, much easier. And have, it has an X in it. And I said, can we, can we stop calling it New Mutants? Calls, call it X-Force. And they gave it the green light, and then we were on to the second best-selling comic book of all time, which, ironically, I will point out to you, uh, has all new characters that didn't exist 16 months before. Like, the, as I get older, I'm more like my young self was a badass. Man, I would love to do any, like, like I was saying, Disney, like a villain or something from like, I don't know, like Jafar or Captain Hook or anything iconic like that, that would be amazing. I find them more interesting than, say, the protagonist characters because they usually have a bunch of different cool things or, or wicked things that they do or a cool song or something that makes them endearing. I mean, there's a whole Disney villain section out there and I was just like, ooh, this is all amazing. <laughs> Ooh, uh, I, I, what, what am I gonna do? What I hope is that I just keep drawing, telling stories and being a storyteller is my focus in life. I'm trying to draw a page every day, unlike some of my peers. And so I'm just dedicated to, you know, if, if I pass, hopefully it's at the drawing table and they're like, he still has a pencil in his hand. He's not breathing, but he has a pencil in his hand. I never thought of myself as a songwriter. I had studied long form composition, which of course I do, but I had studied the classical masters of the past, you know, Beethoven, Mozart, and Bach. And, you know, when it comes to a song that moves people, people want to talk about it, they want to hear about it, everyone wants to be moved, you know, as I do, as you do. So Roberta Flack heard that song on a plane. She just did a concert with Quincy Jones, and she fell in love with the song, and she called Quincy, she told me, and she said, uh, Quincy, how do I meet Charles Fox? Uh, next thing I had a call from Roberta Flack. I said, you don't know me, but I'm gonna sing your songs. And I said, Roberta, how lucky for me that you found that song. And she's a very spiritual, wonderful lady. And uh, she said, no, the, the song found me. Killing me softly with this song, killing me softly. I've written hundreds of songs that people don't know, you know? So um, you think, you'd be thankful for the ones they do. Now that's a fun chat, but there's more. We have full interviews of each of these guests on our YouTube channel.